You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's time for another Ask Camp Kenny question. And uh, woo, we got a couple good questions today. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is from a nice young woman. I, I, I don't know if she's a young woman. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know, I just said that. But a nice woman, one of our Patreon supporters, I'm hoping I get this question up. Uh, oh, ooh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Look, it's loading. Where is everything? Why is it loading? Why can't I get it going? I'll tell you what, sometimes technology can be a pain in the neck. Anyway, Kim Adams from Kauai, out there in the great state of Hawaii, asks this. She says that her year-old sulcata is digging a tunnel. Should she be worried? Well, digging is absolutely necessary or actually natural for a sulcata tortoise. We've had a lot of rain, guys, so it's a little soggy back here. But here's one of my female sulcata tortoises, and she's just kind of hanging about. Now, here in Florida, I do not like these guys to dig uh, tunnels because the tunnels won't hold their form. I've actually lost tortoises before where a tunnel has collapsed and the tortoise has drowned. Uh, so that's a big problem. You can see it's very wet here and look at this. That is the water table. So that's as deep as it would have to good dig in order to hit water. So in the wild these animals are going to dig burrows to kind of get out of the hot sun or to get out of the cold of the desert nights. So it's very consistent in those burrows. Here in my area of Florida, what I've done, here's another sulcata, is I've got the barn. Now the barn's got a heater in it for the winter and it stays cooler than the outside temperature in the summer. So the animals have learned to go in and out. They are just wandering all over. Here's Lumpy. So they can just basically walk in and out. Now, Kim, should you be worried about this animal digging? Uh, well, the sooner you can stop the animal from digging and train it to go inside of a man-made enclosure or shelter, uh, that would be easier for you. So while the animal is small at a year old, I would make sure you stop the animal from digging. Um, just because, you know, as it gets bigger, it's gonna wanna just keep digging bigger and bigger burrows. And I know that you guys have volcanic soil, but every once in a while you get some torrential rains and it's very possible for those rains to collapse whatever burrow the animal has dug. Here's another sulcata. They're kind of just wandering around this time of day. There's one out there. They're all over the place right now. So um, I would do that by uh, stopping them from digging. If you see them digging a burrow, pull them out, fill the burrow in and uh, put something in that particular area that they can't dig through. I sometimes use cinder block, which I have right over here. And those cinder blocks, I'll sometimes throw in a hole. For example, now this is getting torn down, guys. Things are looking a little shabby, but you can see that I had someone trying to dig here. I throw the cinder blocks in and that pretty much stops them from digging. Uh, and after a while, they figure, ah, we're not gonna dig. It's not worth it. Let's just go in the barn, which is good. So that's what happens with them. Um, if you lived in an area like my friend Bob Bloom out there in Arizona, uh, you, he lets them naturally dig. That being said, uh, where the sulcatas are from and in Arizona you get monsoonal rains and in the wild and even in the backyard there sometimes disaster strikes, uh, floods can happen. So if you guys can control things by making a man-made enclosure, I would do that. It's just an easier way. Most people do not want giant tortoise burrows inside or in their backyard. So I would recommend you guys do that. This way the animal does not get killed by some kind of accident. All right, so there you go, Kim. I hope that helped you out. Uh, but we got another question I'm gonna answer today, and it is from Ryan McNulty over there, Ryan's Ark. Do Nile monitors, when grown, require terrestrial habitat more than they require high climbing cages such as a green iguana? Well, uh, the Nile monitor is an interesting species. Uh, they do take to the water sometimes. They are found, uh, I'm gonna go in here with Slinky since he is the resident monitor that I have. Um, Niles get about six feet long uh, and they can climb, but when they get large like that, uh, they're gonna need very big branches uh, in order to stay uh, aloft up uh, there very high. So here's Slinky. Come here, Slinky. Come say hello. Come on. Come on. Come say hello to everybody. They love you. Uh, we're talking about monitors. We're talking about your cousin, the uh, 
Varanus Nilaticus or whatever that is, the Nile monitor. And uh, this, of course, is an Asian water monitor, but they have similar habits. Uh, they are monitor lizards. They're carnivores and scavengers. Uh, they're not quite, the Nile is not quite as aquatic as the Asian water monitor, but they will swim. They live near rivers. They're always stealing crocodile eggs uh, and turtle eggs and bird eggs and anything they can kind of grab onto uh, and raid the nest. So there's Slinky just kind of floating around. But um, anyhow, what I would suggest doing is make your cage high enough you can walk into comfortably. This cage is eight foot tall. Um, you see, I don't really have any other branches up high, um, not because they don't climb, but because I really don't have a way to fasten those branches or found any logs that are large enough to handle his weight. Now, Nile monitors get pretty heavy, not quite as big as this guy here, but they do get heavy enough that they can easily pull down branches. So whatever you decide, you may want to build some kind of shelving. Okay, so make the cage to where it's got shelving so you can utilize uh, more space in a smaller area. By going up, you'll have more space. And you see that tail? That's just letting me know that he does not feel comfortable with me behind him. So if I were to get too close, he'd give me a whip. But now that he sees me, we're okay, we're friends. So anyhow, the same thing with Nile monitors. Now Niles generally are also more difficult to tame. They have a bad rap as being a little bit kind of jerks. Uh, as far as monitors, but there are some that do tame up. That's not the case for every single one. But what I would recommend is, you know, just uh, working with them when they're small and always, always working with that animal so that it's used to you uh, coming into the enclosure. The reason I like these larger enclosures is because the animal uh, needs to move around a lot, whether it's any kind of monitor is gonna need ample space because they're very active, very intelligent lizards that are gonna wanna explore their habitat. So the Nile monitor is absolutely no different. Uh, Slinky, you can see, is gonna come on up here because I stink to high heaven. So he's like, hey man, are you food? He's just kind of checking things out. Now, Nile monitors, uh, to answer your question more thoroughly, are what you would be considering terrestrial. But uh, I don't think it hurts. They're not quite as arboreal as a green iguana. Uh, but in fact, sometimes green iguanas aren't as arboreal as green iguanas. It's kind of funny. Uh, down here in Florida, we see most of the green iguanas near water on the banks of uh, lakes. Uh, I also see them on the Florida Turnpike south of the Lake Worth um, Toll Plaza because they are just hanging out along the canals and along the fence on the turnpike. There's a lot of weeds that grow there that they like to eat, so basically they're doing that. Now the monitors, okay, the Asian uh, or Nile monitors, uh, we actually have those in Florida as well, and they're also found along the canals uh, where they can jump into the water to elude capture or danger in any way. So um, I would definitely have a large water, water uh, feature for them to soak in, perhaps swim around if you can uh, you know, save the space. Um, I would do probably 80, 20, 80% land, 20% water. Uh, you could probably do 60, 40, wouldn't hurt either. Um, they would definitely make use of that water. And then to kind of get more shelving in areas that are secure that they can use the higher elevations as well, as long as their entire body can fit on it without any issues at all. So look at Slinky, he's just gonna rest right now. Very, very cool lizard, I love him. And if you can get a, a Nile monitor and raise it up and get it tamed up, uh, they're awesome too. Down here in Florida, they're considered a species of special concern or a conditional species. So here in Florida, you have to have a special permit. And in fact, not a lot of people are breeding or selling them any longer. Uh, that's because they have established themselves uh, in the wild here in South Florida and not very far from my home here uh, in Palm Beach County. So there are colonies of Nile monitors in Palm Beach because that monitor species ranges all throughout sub-Saharan Africa. They go far south into South Africa where they will get cool nights. So the animal has to be a bit more robust. So our South Florida weather is very good for them. So uh, let me just go ahead and show you a Merton's water monitor. It's Marty the Merton's monitor. Uh, he's out and you'll see where he's hanging out. He's kind of hanging out in this uh, philodendron plant right there. And he's... Uh, a water monitor but you notice uh, I notice his habits he loves to climb he loves to be over the water 
He feels secure on this basket. He sunbathes or he'll use this rock right here, this flat stone up on this shelf, which is quite a bit up off the ground. So he's either soaking or swimming around in the water or he's up here and that is, and he's a little flighty, but he's never bitten me before, but he does have that little flighty nature. So I don't want to get him too freaked out. But he is a beautiful, beautiful uh, Merton's water monitor. But you can see any kind of furniture that I have in here is able to take the weight of the animal. Very, very important. All these logs get used, okay? And uh, I took out the substrate because in the winter he was burrowing into the substrate instead of going into the box and I didn't want him to freeze to death. So uh, that's what I did with him. Such a cool lizard. One more time, let's look at Murdy. Murdy, how you doing there, Murdy? All right, man. So we got to see a uh, couple of monitors. We talked about sulcatas today. We answered a couple of questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hey, if you want to help out with me and videos and stuff like that, go on over to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan, where you guys can become Patreon supporters and you'll have access to videos and other materials that you wouldn't normal, normally get. Uh, let's see, where's, where is, let's, since we're here, let's say hello to Pinky because I know everyone loves Pinky too. And uh, you guys haven't seen her in a little while. I want to make sure that you guys see her and know that she is doing awesome. There she is. Hey girl, come on over here and say hello to everyone. Come on over here. There she is. That's my little Pinky. She is a beauty. She had a nice big fat rat the other day. So she's feeling a little bit sluggish. Again, you can see her environment. We've got two big oak logs. We've got her water and we've got a hide and we've got some substrate. Now, um, she always goes in this hide. So I feel comfortable having the substrate in there with her. All right, everybody, you know the deal. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to continue to support these cool, fun videos we get to make and educate everybody about the animals that I live my life with and answer questions for you as well. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love making them for you. I love visiting with my animals and showing them all to you. So there you go. Be kind to reptiles, everybody. And uh, I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks so much. See you later. Okay, and mom okay. right here Kate is gonna give us a tour. I want to see how well the yeah, teacher